Good morning, everybody. It is May 13th, Thursday. Tomorrow's my sister's birthday and my nephew, Nick, his birthday. So we're sneaking up on it. Um, May was always a big month. My dad's birthday was the 19th <clears throat> and mine is the 28th. Um, Wadi Wachtels is the 24th. Ray Metz, who did my cartage for years and years and years, is the 26th. I think Stevie Nicks is in here and Mike Picaro. Lots of people. It's, it's a pretty packed month of birthdays. Um, it was really nice doing the Talbot Brothers. I got a great note from John Michael Talbot. Uh, that, that's been kind of one of the fun parts as I do these. And then I, I hear from the artists and they get they they get back to me, Steve Eaton and Janice Ian, um, Streisand, all these people have contacted me back going, oh man, you know, thanks for what you did and loved it. Jude Cole wrote back, all of them. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's really early. <clears throat> I've been up since since five. I had a great time last night. I did Vicki Abelson's um, Shooting the Shit with Vicki show. It was her first live in the same room show in 14 months. Uh, so we had a great time hanging. She's really a delight. And then I'm going to finish this up and pack up some gear, and I'm going to head over to Judith Owen's house, and we're going to shoot some stuff for her Sunday show and work on a new song. So things are, things are just kind of cranking along and, and busy, which I'm, I'm totally grateful of because busy works for me, not busy doesn't work for me at all. So um, let me think if there was anything else of any urgency. Um, on our clubhouse, um, Sean Vidal has put together a site. Um, uh, he's taken it on to do a site um, that looks like it's building. It's really, really a, a fun idea uh, for clubhouse members between our two-week live streams uh, to get together and hang. And it's become such a profound community um, that I think it's, it's great because even when we're doing the live streams, there's so much internal conversation taking place. Everybody's really kind of really gotten into each other's lives and, and are really interested in each other's um, what's going on in people's lives. It's, it's, it's really cool. I'm really digging that. Um, let's see. What, what else? It was something I was just thinking of. But, um, mm, nah, I... I guess it wasn't that important because it just went away like that. Uh, let's see. So today I'm going to, I'm going to visit a completely different artist, um, uh, than I've been doing the past few days. Um, I've got the glass. Yesterday was the, the day before when I, when I worked with Wadi and Russ and then yesterday doing the, um, uh, or the day before the, the Brett McKenzie project, it's the first time I've ever been in the studio where I actually had to take my glasses off to read my charts. So I think it's time to get in and get my eyes checked because um, I would have never been able to do that in the past. And it's, uh, I've mentioned it before, it's really weird. You know, you start to think, oh, God, my eyes are getting horrible. I can't see anything when I'm looking. And then I go in to get my eyes checked and the, and the doctor goes, no, your eyes are improving. That's why your prescription, it's not like your prescription's too weak. Now it's too strong. So then I think, you know, live another 50 years and I might not need glasses anymore because I've been wearing glasses since I was a kid. So we'll see. But it was interesting. So when I'm up close like this, I can see things. If I have my glasses, I'm really straining on it. So, OK, so the um, artist um, that I want to visit today, this was really a, a really a fun project. Um, her name was Zulima Cousseau. Z-U-L-E-M-A, and we did an album in 1973 called Miss Z, Miss Z, and um, she um, was came from uh, Tampa, Florida, is where she was born, and she did solo work, but she also became a member of a group called Faith, Hope, and Charity down there, and they had some um, success um, as a group and charted some songs. But uh, she also worked as a backup singer. And it's when I look at her, she's, she sang backup with um, Aretha Franklin, um, 
she uh, toured an opening for, for people like Bill Weathers, Roberta Flack, Earth, Wind & Fire, Sly and the Family Stone, uh, Gladys Knight and the Pips, and Marvin Gaye. Yeah, that's not a bad lineup to be working with. Um, she eventually, later in life, returned to Tampa and became the, the, the lead musician and kind of pro probably like one of the musical directors of the First Baptist Church in West Tampa. And tragically, she passed away uh, September 30th, uh, 2013, um, and she was only 66 years old. Um, this album was produced um, uh, by Bobby Taylor and engineered by Andrew Berliner. I worked with Andrew a great deal. And the, the, the thing I love on this one was um, Gene Page did the arranging of the uh, strings and stuff and horns and stuff. I worked so many records with Gene Page and Gene was absolutely one of the most unique characters in this business I have ever known. He was notorious for, he had, he had a stopwatch and he'd be sitting there and like sometimes I'd be on a date and it would be like four of us on the date and then Gene would be there doing it and he'd tap his music stand and go, orchestra, orchestra. And we'd look around and there's like four of us sitting there and we'd go, what's going on? And then he'd go, okay, let's, let's start the song, Katie. One, two, no, no, no. They started, hit the watch again. One, two, no. All his charts always smelled like a cat box, like ammonia, because he was writing while he was driving to the dates. He had so many dates going on. And when Gene passed away, um, John Gilliton and I went to um, his memorial service. And boy, everybody that got up and talked talked about Gene's stopwatch and just all of his idiosyncrasies. It was really one of the most entertaining hangs ever on that Barry White spoke. All kinds of people were there because Gene was an absolute, absolute staple in the uh, L.A. music scene when it came to arrangers. The, he was probably the workingest arranger in town. Um, and the, the musicians on this album are really pretty amazing. Um, after you get past the bass players, they, they, everybody else was busy, so they, had, they, had, they called this guy, I don't know, this kid, I don't know who he was. It was something Lee Scar, Scar, something like that. Oh no, that was me. So it was me on bass, uh, Ed Green on drums, and then the guitar section. Here's Dean Parks on guitar here back 1973. There I am working with Dean who joined our live stream uh, the day before yesterday and, and visited with you and had a great time and, and it was really sweet, all the comments that came in about Dean. Dean is amazing. But So the guitar section was Dean, uh, Dean Parks, Jay Graydon, um, Melvin Reagan and Robert White on guitars. Joe Sample was playing clavinet. Um, Leonard Caston and Micho Levy were playing piano. The great Ernie Watts, Jackie Kelso, and Bill Green were on sax. Jimmy Henderson, Tom Shepard on trombone, and Bobby Bryant and Oscar Bashir and uh, Paul Hubenow on trumpet. And the background vocals on this were, um, hold on, were uh, care. Oh, God, don't do that. You know, I'm right in the middle of giving credits. Um, the background vocals were uh, Carolyn Willis and Julia and Maxine Waters of the famous Waters family who sang on damn near everything that ever existed in the history of humankind. So those are the um, copious notes. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just listen because this is really fun. And, and this was an area we were doing... Quite a few. I, I did back in those days. I did quite a few um, R and B Motown dates, um, uh, dance stuff. I did you know a, a number of disco things from Village People to Donna Summers to um, the Weather Girls and all kinds of, of things from that period. Um, but I'm gonna do a few of these songs by by uh, Zulima, and it's it's tragic that that she. So many of the artists that have worked with have passed, and uh, and it also gets a little scary. I, I look at at her, and we were born just a couple of months apart, you know. So it's really heartbreaking and scary when you see, you know, the, all these people have having had passed. And for her, that was quite a few years ago. You know, it was eight years ago that she passed. So sad. 
Uh, okay, uh, this is called You Changed Me that prematurely started here. And here we go. Gene's arrangements are so defined. Ed Green, we did a lot of records together. He was just like such a solid, he, they, they would set um, click tracks to, to Ed. His time was so good. And, uh, and I mentioned it in an earlier um, video that when I was 12 years old, I was studying piano with a woman named Debbie Green. And years later, I was talking to Ed on a session and mentioned it and he went, oh, that was my mom. <laughs> And chances are, when I was in the garage taking my piano lesson, Ed might have been in the house, and we were both a couple little kids. And then years later, we ended up in the studio all the time together. And uh, there's such a signature on Gene Page's string arrangements and all, all of his arranging. It, it was just amazing. And he was one of those guys, he'd see me go, Lee, baby, baby, so good to see you, baby. And it was like, not jive. There are certain people that if they said something like that to you, man, you would just go unclean, get away from me. But with Gene, it was like so heartfelt. He was just the neatest, kindest, wonderful cat to be around. And just intense because he had so much going on. It was ridiculous. He would have dates all over town and doing arranging for everybody. He was a, quite a piece of work. Um, we also, uh, on this album, we did the old, um, I think, who wrote this one? I think this might be Gamble and Huff wrote this one. Yeah, I think this is an old Gamble and Huff song, Love Train. Uh, it's a pretty standard R&B tune, but it was really fun to do it. And they were certainly one of the truly great, like Goffin and King and all those people that came out of the uh, Brill Building and all that. Uh, Gamble and Huff were major. Lamont Dozier, Holland Dozier, Holland, all of those. So here's Love Train. Love Train. 
love playing this kind of stuff. One of the great joys for me in my career of being a studio musician is just variety. To uh, be able to work on projects like this with this, you know, kind of just very Motown feel and then end up, you know, with Jackson Brown and then end up with Billy Cobham and then end up on just, you know, all these different, different kinds of things making you constantly be on your toes on these. I know when Gene would bring in the arrangements for these songs, it would always have things pretty well written out, what, what they wanted, um, but he'd always go, make it yours, make it yours. So you always had some luxuries. You had keynotes that you would mark down within it. There were many times I was on projects where uh, left hand of the clavinet and bass were doubling, and so you really wanted to make sure you nailed that section, so you'd notate, make sure that you, you uh, honored that when you got there, but then there were other sections in the song where you could kind of had, take some liberties with it and, and throw your own personality into it. And he was always really uh, appreciative of it. And, and it. and it was good because he would, you know, if he thought it wasn't right, he would say it because that's, you, you end up, um, the arranger really is the guy that, that you take your, your um, direction from on these things because they have an overall vision in their head of how these things are going to end up because many times we would be just doing an, the uh, um, rhythm dates for these and the string date and horn dates would follow they would they would um, overdub those later on um, so you'd have to be cognizant of what the uh, 
direction that the arranger wanted this stuff to go and you didn't want to be overplaying in a section that was going to be like with string lines running through it or anything like that. So there was usually pretty good dialogue on the dates um, between the, the, especially the rhythm section dates and the arranger on, on them just to make sure everything was like, you know, laying where it had to be. But within the confines of those, you could sometimes really be, be able to make it your, put a signature on it of your own. So let's see, maybe another tune here. What do we got? What do we got up here? Uh, this is a song called Giving Up. But I really dig her voice, and I dig the arrangements. And I just dig this style, and I, I've, I've done so many of, of these kind of albums over the years. And um, every time I get, I've gotten to do one, I just really enjoy it, because, man, you could just jump in, and just it stuff just grooves and feels great. I think Ed Green eventually, I think he lives in Nashville. He en ended up going there and doing a lot of work in Nashville. I loved it when he was out here in L.A., though, for so many of the early years in the 70s into the 80s. And then um, he just he moved on. But uh, it's but it's fun. You know, I mean, when I look at this, I, I just I, I always get such a kick when I'm looking at the credits on all these albums that are going back into the very early 70s and to see Dean Parks's name on them. I mean, it's just uh, the, the consistency of relationships and stuff is so good. And it's like when, when Dean, when we were in the studio day before yesterday with Brett McKenzie, as soon as we sit down to play, there's a thing that happens that's just, you know, it's years and years and years of playing together and experience of just crafting parts and sounds that, that work well together. And I, I miss Jay Graydon. Uh, you know, he, he used to be another one of the staple people in the uh, in the recording uh, scene in LA and then he got more into production and writing and stuff so he kind of backed down from it but he was such a great hang in the studio he's a really funny cat and uh, so uh, I see him but I, I just miss playing with him and all that so here's a song called Giving Up and this again is Zulima from 1973 Ms. Z Miss Zed is the album title Yeah. It's like shaft, it's like all that period.
Oh, yeah. Definitely one of those songs that would be fun to play live for a big, steamy crowd. Boy, it would be fun, fun, fun. So that's Zulima. There's more, many more tracks on the album and other albums. So if you want to check her up, please do. Um, she was really quite good. And her last name, uh, it'll be written down, but it's C-U-S-S-E-A-U-X, Cousseau. Uh, Zulima Cousseau. And, um, and that's... That's, I think, it for today, but it sure is fun to go visit other genres and other styles that, that have, you know, had the joy of getting to, uh, to play with, play in, you know, and hearing that stuff, I'm just suddenly seeing back, I'm just seeing Gene standing there conducting us and stuff, and what a trip, yeah, and, and the thing that was great is all those early dates, we weren't all ISO'd and stuff. We had amps leaking in the room and drums were in the room and everything. Everything was just, man, it was alive instead of all this completely anal stuff where everybody, so we got to put the drums in that room and you, oh, you can bring an amp, but we're going to put it in a closet. We don't want, you know, don't want it to leak in. And you just kind of go, God, some of the magic of those old records was the fact that there was pretty minimal baffling in the room and you were just hearing a little of everything. But I think a lot of it was... Also, you don't, you don't want it to leak if there's going to be mistakes and you have to punch them in and you don't want to hear the mistake bleeding through in the background. So you didn't make mistakes. You played it perfectly every time. You know, it's another world, another world altogether. So I'm going to wish everybody a great day today. Um, I'm going to get ready and pack up in a little. I, this was an early start. I mean, it's only 8.20 right now here in the morning. So, um, but I'm going to pack up my amp, get my stuff together, and I'll head over to Judas in a couple of hours and work with her and then head back. And uh, then I've got a couple of tracks to do 
um, that people have sent me. And oh, and and the, the cameo thing's been really fun. I've in the past two days, I've I've done five of them. I just got one from a a shout out that I'm sending off to a, a stage crew in in Hawaii, celebrating their like big anniversary of how long they've been doing um, uh, their stage crew work and stuff. So this is really fun. So if anybody wants to check that out, I'm on cameo and I'm. I'm I'm throwing out birthday and anniversary wishes, and I sang happy birthday to a couple of people yesterday, and uh, it's fun. I've been I've been told about this site for two years. I've never done anything. I just I'm so damn crazy all the time. But like I said the other day, I, Lisa Loeb came by the house to um, to get a book because she and uh, Roey, her husband, are both in the in in my book, and they came by to pick it up, and she said, "So are you doing cameo?" And I said, well, I haven't done So she talked me into signing up for it. And, and I've, so it's been fun. Uh, I look forward to all kinds of things that might go on there. We'll see. You know, New adventures every day. And eventually I'll be able to get on the road and add that to back to my resume of the things I love to do. So we'll see how that goes. So have a great day. I'll be back tomorrow. And um, again, every day, I'll be glad when the day I don't, say this comes um because it'll mean we're healed but uh until we are i just want to thank all the frontliners all the healthcare workers all the people in the supermarkets and the hardware stores the postal people the fire department the police officers i mean there's so many aspects of people that have to come in, in interaction with the general population and until the general population is really healthy these people are putting themselves a bit in harm's way. Even if you've had your shots, you still don't want to be, you know, subjected to a lot of stuff. So thank you every day from the bottom of my heart. You guys are something special and gals. So um, I am going to get going here and I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. So have a great day, though. Okie doke. Okay. Bye bye.